I used the analogy last year that we literally went 10 years and six months in 2020, where the world basically moved so quickly to one side. And it caught a lot of people off guard. This changed everything from how we work, where we work, where we commute to, how we're going to spend our time, what we find valuable has changed massively. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the VIP Financial Education YouTube channel, where we help you go further, faster financially. I'm your host, Michael Maffey. I've got a, a really exciting episode that I've been looking forward to with MC Lobsher, and just a prince of a human being, but also as knowledgeable as it gets. So we're excited to have him on the show here today. Excited to be back on, and thank you so much for having me, and looking forward yeah. to it. You kind of are that Swiss army knife, if you will, where, you know, anything that's in any type of economic, financial, investment space, uh, you know, I think that you could probably talk for hours on each one of them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, once you've had a paradigm sh a shift uh, and a worldview shift, you change your models and your frameworks according to that big shift. A big one for me was, was growing up in South Africa, obviously during a very interesting time, I realized that nothing was as it was uh, as presented, right? And then I, and this was as a young man. And then I realized, well, nothing is as presented. And when I came to money, I, I started to realize that too, that there were really two different worlds. And I started going down that road of trying to uh, figure out how things work and uh, to, to basically uh, get to my goal at that stage of financial freedom and figuring out all these different things. So I've always used the framework of, of economics and markets uh, and history uh, and then also banking as sort of a framework uh, through which I see the world and try and make sense of the economic environment because there's so many overlaps. You know, if you understand markets and the economy and you understand banking and you have a historical context of how to fit this in, then you're starting to get a clear picture of where we are, where we've come from and potentially where we're going to. Well, what has changed in the last year, in your opinion? So obviously, last time you were on the channel um, was pre-pandemic. Are you seeing a lot of market shifts out there right now? What are you seeing investors doing? What are you seeing people doing with their retirement accounts at this point? Absolutely. That's a great question. You know, before the pandemic started, I looked at this fourth industrial revolution concept, which a lot of people were talking about. And you're seeing so many things technologically that is just the speed of which this, this change is happening uh, is unlike we've seen before. We've, we've had periods in time in, in history where we've seen massive changes, right? The agricultural age, the industrial age, and within the industrial age, we've seen several facets of that, you know, uh, with from the steam engine to more factory orientated to like systemized and processes where Henry Ford came in and could develop this, <laughs> this inline process to eventually the computer age and, and, and smartphone age and so forth. But where we are with the, and this will set the table kind of for, for, for the answer is looking at the fourth industrial revolution. It's like, unlike we, anything we've ever seen before, if you've got, the internet of things, <laughs> which with 5G, I mean, it is quite remarkable how this is gonna impact every part of society. You're gonna have driverless cars. You're, you're gonna have wearables, which we've already had, AI, robotics. You know, I recently had some surgery done. It was performed by a robot. It was mm. literally performed by, I mean, it's crazy. It's mind blowing. So you have all these different things that are starting to happen technologically. And we've got a supercomputer, you got one of these, you got a supercomputer in your hand, you know, as I jokingly always say, it's Star Trek technology, right? It's kind of like uh, Captain Kirk had a video phone in his, uh, <laughs> in his spaceship talking to anyone in the universe, you know? Uh, so we have that now at our fingertips and it's, and it's really very inexpensive. So we found ourselves in this age already where something was ready to, to happen. We were ready to, to go to one direction quickly. And I used the analogy last year that we literally went 10 years and six months in 2020, where the world basically moved so quickly to one side. And it caught a lot of people off guard um, because of the speed at which it happened. And of course, it was done because of what was happening in the economy with the virus and lockdowns and so forth. Um, but essentially, people work from home. You know, if you think about it, 
people were essentially just going to work from home anyway. The studies that came out showed that they're more productive. It's the overheads are less for their employers. It gives them a bigger talent market to hire from. Uh, yeah. The people working from home were more happier, had a well-balanced life. They were more productive and so forth in, in the studies. And most people were already moving online with products and services. So essentially, you, know, you were going to get left behind if you weren't on the uh, internet already and had some sort of an online element to your business as a, as a business owner, even if you had physical products, right? Um, you were going to be left behind. And we saw it, a ton of uh, businesses that unfortunately happened to. A lot of them have adjusted and adapted quickly by shipping mm -hmm. stuff. We fast forwarded like 10 years because of that, that moment that we had in the fourth industrial revolution, where we are at right now. This changed everything from how we work, where we work, where we commute to, um, how we're going to spend our time, what we find valuable has changed massively. Look at all the people moving outside of cities now because they can work from home. It's changed how they work. They changed jobs because they can now work from, for anyone. Uh, mm -hmm. They have moved, uh, let's just say, to the suburbs or more areas outside of the cities because they want a bigger yard. They maybe want a bigger house because they're now in it more and working from it. So for investors, this had a massive impact. You know, you look at the short-term rental industry. <laughs> Talk about oh. pent up demand. It's yeah. just through the roof. So because people were basically stuck, they can't travel to a lot of places where would they go. They would go to places that they can drive or places within the United States that they can drive. And uh, we've had investors and people in our community in the short term rental uh, industry that have had massive successes over the, the past couple of months. And they've just been slammed. They can't keep up with all of the bookings. Yeah. So um, and then, you know, multifamily is also a very desirable asset where that kind of plays into is there was a lot of money created. Let's just take a step back economically. 25% of the, the currency units in the United States ever was created in 2020. That money has to flow somewhere. So where the, does that money go? And usually it goes into hard assets. So a lot of it has gone into multifamily. A lot of companies have invested there. A lot of hedge funds have invested in, in, in uh, big multifamily projects. And so there's a lot of money chasing that right now. And of course, We've had people that have been out of work, right? So the one side of the economy is like, yes, there's been a lot going on, a lot of excitement, movement, money, new businesses, new opportunities, and so forth. But there was a big part of the economy that was left behind. There are now folks that unfortunately are in a predicament because of their uh, loss of income. They haven't been able to pay mortgages, pay rent, and so forth. And there have been moratoriums, but that also leaves kind of like this question mark of what is to play out in the next couple of months, because there's a sector of the economy that, that, that is now completely imbalanced in the sense that investors have properties that haven't received rental payments from their tenants for a while, right? Mm -hmm. So that has put a financial burden uh, on them or, or stress there. And it's the same thing within um, multifamily. So overall in the economy, you know, there's a lot of question marks, a lot of opportunities in this newer economy, you know, because yeah. it was new kind of already moving into 20. It's just become really, really new uh, now where we are in 2021. Well, it's been really interesting to follow those trends. You know, I just don't see, and of course, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I just don't see like New York City. I don't see Los Angeles. I don't see Chicago. You know, I don't see... San Francisco, I don't see them ever going back to the same place that they were. So, you know, in your opinion, is this a, a permanent move to that? You know, people are looking for just a higher quality of life right now. You know, things that were really important to them before, like sporting events or going to the theater, you know, anything that was going to be really involved in a downtown metro metropolitan area, people have ultimately lived uh, and learned that it's maybe not as important as they originally thought it would be. Is that kind of your viewpoint on that or? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to change the, um, you know, it was a massive paradigm shift too from, uh, from a worldview perspective for a lot of folks where what they thought was valuable, all mm -hmm. of a sudden they were like, oh, I used to think like you could live in the city and you work in the city and you've got this whole experience. Mm -hmm. Well, that experience is no longer really there. What mm -hmm. other experiences are there that, could be, you know, better, better for me? Could I be closer to family and friends um, and live closer to them, which they live, let's just say, in the suburbs? But also this, this, the states, there's been a massive migration. 
Again, this this started happening before 2020, where people were moving from California. They were moving from Illinois. They were moving from New York, New Jersey, and from other states uh, uh, to uh, Florida, to Texas, and so forth. And you mentioned New York. You know, somebody asked me the other day too, I said, MC, what do you think? Is that coming back? Is it not coming back? And I always take a look at, you know, the major players inside of New York. What are they doing? Well, if mm -hmm. Goldman Sachs is looking to locate an entire division of their wealth management firm down to, I think it, it's West Palm that they're looking mm -hmm. at. And a lot of other folks are looking to moving their companies down there. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they think it's coming back either. I think if it comes back in a certain way, it's going to be different. You just don't, you know, the dynamic of humans and uh, uh, cities and networks, you just don't, it's not a switch that you just shut off and you flip back on. And now everything just goes back to normal. Yeah. Um, you know, the world has sort of moved on. A lot has changed in a very sm a sm a small time. So I think that major cities, yeah, there's going to be changes to how people feel about living there. And, you know, right now, especially the, the mass amount of folks moving from those specific cities to, uh, to other states like Florida. Somebody was sharing a statistic, and I know that 99% of statistics are made up. But it was, but it was a it was a massive amount increase, almost over thirty percent in a quarter that drivers' licenses was switched from New York to Florida, for example, or something, uh, just within the last quarter. It's kind of it's kind of crazy to see to see that happening. Yeah, I appreciate your perspective on that. That being said, tell me about the cash flow core builder. Yeah, the cash flow core builder is a, is a program that we created in our community of how to build a strategy right now. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel we are in the process already of the greatest transfer of wealth in human history. So we're in that program, we share how to build a strategy right now, because mm -hmm. you do different things at different places in the market cycle, right? We don't do the same thing over and over and over. That's not, that's not how the professional investors do. So we look at the, we are in the fourth industrial revolution. We are living during the greatest reset. Mm -hmm. We're living in a world that is changing so quickly and constantly at a speed which we've never ever seen so, so how do you position yourself how do you build a strategy how how do you invest what do you invest in um so we share that within the cash flow core builder program we also sh uh, share uh, tactics and vehicles within that program uh and within the community of everything that we're doing right now because there there is an opportunity that if you're listening and watching this right now uh, there is an opportunity now, unlike I've never seen before, uh, to amass massive, massive resources and wealth for yourself and your family. Uh, just think of all the other massive shifts that have happened in history. Uh, you know, imagine you lived during a time where you went from the agricultural age to the industrial. Not a lot that you could do if you didn't have the farms or didn't have the ability to buy a factory, right? But during the time that we live in today in the information age, I see an enormous opportunity. For someone that's starting with limited resources uh, or just starting out to be on the right side of this transfer of wealth uh, that is happening right now. And that's where a lot of other vehicles play into this. Besides real estate and insurance, we take a look at cryptocurrency strategies, for example, which plays a huge, huge role in how we invest moving forward. So uh, that's what uh, that program includes. It's my understanding um, that it's a thousand dollars to come on board, correct? That is correct, and it includes a, a four to six week program of content. Uh, there's live calls involved with myself and community. Uh, that, you know, as you know, and as you've shared, the power of a community is so important. Of what you learn from others, what you see others are into. So I think that's like a, one of the great assets. Uh, that, that we have as well, just as what uh, you folks have uh, as well. Yeah, and we're, when we're talking about what you said there, which is this potentially the greatest transfer of wealth in, in, the, in the history of the world, you know, being able to be on the right side of that and really capitalize on that with experts behind your back, um, you know, we always feel is important. If you're interested in this, you're going to email ninja at vipfinancialeducation.com. Again, be sure to use your first, your last name, and the best phone number. Do plenty of research on this guy. There's tons of information out there on him. And uh, I 
I, I couldn't find a bad thing on you and I dug pretty hard. So uh, I guess you've kept it pretty squeaky clean over the year and just have done great business, which I obviously applaud that. That's how we do business here. Those are the only people that we bring on this show. They are out doing right by people. They're doing the right things and they're conducting good business. So guys, uh, reach out to MC and his team. They'll be sure to get back with you promptly. Drop a like below guys. If you're not a subscriber already, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell notification that's going to give you alerts uh, every time we've got new and, and great content on this to share. Thank you for joining us here today, MC. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, and all you guys out there watching, thanks for joining us. Until next time, take care.